Welcome to the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series. Today's subject is QBot malware. This video will demonstrate how malicious threat actors conduct this multi-stage malware attack. But let's first begin with an introduction to QBot malware. In use by malicious threat actors for well over a decade, QBot, also known as QuackBot, began its days wreaking havoc as a banking trojan. It has since evolved. Because QBot acts as a downloader, it has become a means by which malicious threat actors can drop additional malware onto the victim's system. For example, ransomware gangs such as Black Basta, Revil, Pwned Locker, Egregor, and Megacortex, among others, are using tools like Cobalt Strike and Brute Rattel, also known as BRC4, following QBot malware related enterprise breaches, in some cases to begin a ransomware attack, and others for lateral movement across the now breached network and in still others to steal victim credentials. Though intended for use in red team and adversary simulations, these tools are a tremendous aid to malicious threat actors, such as these gangs, as they're effectively weaponized command and control center tools, further escalating the attack surface and damage done. These tools make it possible for ransomware as a service gangs to deploy beacons on QBot victim systems that can home to an attacker controlled server for the purposes of exfiltrating information and or receiving next stage instructions. Though in existence since 2007, QBot malware is making news now in 2023. In recent months, there's been an increase in this malware being delivered via phishing attacks. Notably, the Black Basta ransomware gang has been using QBot when infiltrating networks. In doing so, these malicious threat actors have furthered the attack by installing Brute Rattel as a second stage malicious payload. Finally, there has also been news of QBot email phishing attacks having an attached PDF file that links to a zip file archive containing a Windows scripting file that is being used to install QBot malware and potentially other next stage malicious threats. In fact, this is the kind of QBot malware attack you are about to see. Here you can see the QBot or QuackBot attack chain. The first stage is a phishing campaign it begins with an email sent to the prospective victim. To make it more convincing and to seem less like spam, the email is often a response to a legitimate email to which the attacker had access. It may even use the real sender's name, except that the sending email address has been altered by the attacker. The email contains a PDF attachment. The contents of that attachment lead the victim to believe that something is wrong with the file, and that in order to view it, he or she needs to click the download button. Doing so, the victim retrieves a zip file with a long random number for a name. When the victim opens the zip archive file, he extracts a Windows script file or WSF file. Typically, a WSF file contains code written in JScript and or VBScript that is executed when opened. When the script file is executed, it downloads the QBot DLL in the form of a .dat file. The DLL is executed using run dll32.exe in the MITRE ATT&CK framework, this is an example of system binary proxy execution. The QBot malware then injects itself into the Microsoft Windows Error Reporting Manager executable, wermgr.exe, allowing it to remain persistent on the victim's system. Now with the background on QBot malware out of the way, next up in this video, Juniper Threat Labs demonstrates the stages of this attack. Here is an example of a phishing email with a PDF attachment sent to the victim. The attachment name begins with ERC1337. If this was a forged reply to a once valid email, the discussion may have been about blockchain or cryptocurrency, as ERC1337 means Ethereum Request for Comment 1337 and is a technical standard stock intended to support businesses with decentralized apps or dApps on the Ethereum blockchain. Then again, 1337 is also hacker speak for leet, as in elite. So the file name may just coincidentally correspond to something blockchain related. Opening the PDF, we, the victim, are shown a message suggesting that there is some kind of problem and that we need to download the file another way. When we are duped into doing this, the hyperlink directs the victim to download a zip archive from an attacker controlled server. The victim then extracts the contents of the zip file, containing a file named erc underscore f913 underscore may3 dot wsf. 
Let's look under the hood and examine part of this WSF file in more detail. The script tries in succession to download the QBot malware from each one of the URLs listed in the code. It iterates down through the list, stopping only after having succeeded. Ultimately, the script downloads a DLL masquerading as a .dat file. When the victim double clicks on the script file, we see in the process monitor that the process wscript.exe is spawned. We also see through Wireshark that it is iterating through each of the URLs we had shown you in the script file. Next, we see the victim downloading the malicious qbot.dat file. And a few moments later, wrmgr.exe is spawned. Here it is highlighted. Looking into the system's memory, we see that qbot has been injected into it. We can dump this memory to a file. This is useful in part because it's already unpacked, such that most antivirus solutions can examine a file like this. If we upload this memory dump file to VirusTotal, you can readily see that most AV engines identify the file as the malicious QBot Trojan. Of course, not every anti-malware engine detected QBot. Let's now look and see whether or not this attack works as successfully with the Juniper SRX firewall, enhanced with protection from Juniper's cloud-based advanced anti-malware solution, Juniper ATP. For the demo, Juniper Threat Labs is using the following setup. We have a VSRX pictured in the center. The VSRX is a virtual SRX firewall providing network security protection. Its purpose is to inspect network traffic and, with the assistance of Juniper ATP Cloud, to detect malware like QBot. In addition to the virtual firewall and cloud-based protections, we are using Juniper's Security Director, which is a centralized management system. Security Director facilitates our configuring and monitoring of the VSRX firewall, and we are using Juniper's Policy Enforcer as well. Juniper's Policy Enforcer enforces security policies on endpoints and ensures they comply with corporate security standards. Pictured as well are several Windows workstations, each of which is connected to the VSRX. There is an Ubuntu server, which is acting as the malware download server. Before we proceed and attempt to use the QBot malware in an attack, with Juniper Connected Security Solutions in place providing protection, let's first take a look at the threat prevention policy that we've set up on our security director and applied to the VSRX. To access the policy, we'll navigate to the Configure tab, and then we select Threat Prevention and Policies. As you can see, we already have an existing policy in place. Let's further inspect the protections being enforced by the applied policy. For this demo, our policy is configured to block command and control traffic at threat level 8 and above. We've also set it up to block infected hosts at threat level 8 and above. Additionally, we've configured our policy to use ATP Cloud for malware detection, and as you can see, we've elected to scan both HTTP downloads and email attachments. Finally, we've chosen to block any and all threats rated at level 7 and above. This threat prevention policy applied to the Juniper VSRX firewall is a critical component of our defenses protecting our systems against malware-related attacks, including QBot. It allows us to detect and block malicious traffic as well as the activity of potentially infected hosts, 
which will then prevent the spread of malware throughout our network in the event that one of our systems gets compromised. So, to begin, we'll log into our target victim system using RDP. And we'll verify that our target has an internet connection by opening a browser and going to Wikipedia. After all, without an internet connection, the victim's PC would be unable to download the QBot malware. As explained earlier, for the QBot attack, our targeted victim was sent a phishing email with a PDF attachment, and opening the victim's email, here it is. Next, acting as the victim, we open the malicious PDF attachment. Soon we'll click the malicious download URL that's in the file here. When we do, the system will attempt to download the zip archive containing the WSF script file. But before we do that, let's look what happens in Wireshark to monitor what happens next. Clicking the download button like URL on the PDF, the victim's PC retrieves the zip archive from the malware server to his or her system and opens the folder that contains the downloaded zip file. Now here is where the rubber meets the road and things get very interesting. Let's see what happens when the victim attempts to open the malicious WSF script file. Hopping over to our Wireshark output, let's see what just happened when our would-be victim attempted to extract the malicious file. Though the victim extracts the WSF file, the Juniper Connected Security Solutions correctly recognized that the script's attempt to retrieve the qbot.dat payload was malicious activity, and thankfully the would-be victim was prevented from doing so. This message from the SRX provides pretty much that same information, if more succinctly. To show that the attack was detected by Juniper, we go to Juniper's ATP cloud. From the Monitor tab, we navigate to Files, and then to HTTP File Downloads. Atop the resulting list on the right, we see that there was an attempt to download something malicious from cinnamonconnection.com.au that was detected at threat level 10. Clicking on that topmost row, we see detailed information about this malware, including static analysis that Juniper performs on the malware. We also see behavior analysis and network activity. Juniper ATP also captures behavioral details as well as the MITRE attack vectors involved. And of course, Juniper tells the customer that the threat detected was a malicious QBot Trojan. Returning to Security Director Cloud, we want to see what action, if any, Juniper's policy enforcer took on the would-be victim system. To do so, we navigate to the Monitor tab, then under Threat Prevention, we choose ATP Cloud Hosts. And there, atop the list, is the victim's host. Security Director indicates that the victim host has been blocked from the network, as something on it was detected at threat level greater than or equal to 7. Of course, we know the reason that the host was blocked was because that it attempted to download the qbot.dat malicious file. To confirm that this PC has been blocked from the network, we first try to RDP to it. When that fails, we'll try, unsuccessfully as you'll see, to ping the host's IP address. Once the security admin is sure that the QBot impacted host is indeed free from infection, he or she will want to restore the blocked system back to the network. To do so, she goes to Security Director and clicks on the blocked host, and then to the right of Investigation Status, she then selects Resolve Fixed. Afterwards, the blocked host will be restored back to the network and able to operate as before. Now that it is no longer blocked, we can verify that the host is back online. Let's try to ping that PC again. 
Looks like it's up and connected to the network. So let's try again and RDP to it and make sure that the host can use the network as well. Bringing up the browser, we navigate to Wikipedia, which demonstrates restored connectivity. After disconnecting the RDP session, we check one last thing on Security Director. That is to show you that the restored host has a clean bill of health with a threat level of zero. That completes our demo of QBot malware. Check out more videos from the Juniper Threat Labs Attack Demo series by visiting juniper.net. Thanks for watching.